Public school students in our area are improving in both math and English according to the latest state test scores released today. But as Project Baltimore's Chris Pabst explains, the MCAP results are still raising concerns about how far behind students have fallen, especially in math. State education leaders optimistic but not satisfied. Mission's not accomplished until we have close to well over as much as possible 100% of our kids going off to college and careers and reading and writing and doing math well. On Tuesday, the Maryland State Department of Education released the first results from last school year's state tests, known as the Maryland Comprehensive Assessment Program, or MCAP. In third through eighth grade, where every student is tested, every district in our region saw increases in math and English proficiencies over the previous year. Carroll County Schools performed among the best in the state, ranking second overall, while Baltimore City Schools ranked at the very bottom, last in both math and English. I believe we're starting to see our record investments in public education paying off in literacy. English language arts proficiencies are far outpacing math. Throughout the state, 46.8% of students in third through eighth grade scored proficient in English. In math, it was nearly half that amount, 24.7%. In Baltimore City, for example, just 9.1% of third through eighth graders scored proficient in math, meaning about 91% were not proficient. We should have brought kids back. Mohammed Chaudhary took over as state superintendent in July 2021. He was not involved in decisions when to reopen Maryland schools after the pandemic, but he says the state's low math scores are directly related to that decision. When you look at nationally, the level of learning loss that happened, there is strong um, correlations you can see between how long you waited to bring back kids in person and, and we waited too long. Take a look at this chart. These are the math scores broken down by grade. The three bars represent 2019, 2022, and 2023. You can see math proficiency improved in all grades compared to last year. But not compared to 2019, every grade is still behind pre-pandemic levels. English, however, is a different story. On this chart, you can see English proficiency levels for most grades are higher in 2023 compared to pre-pandemic levels. School Board President Clarence Crawford, who was here during the pandemic, blamed what he called sketchy information for the delay in reopening schools. And at the time, based on what we knew, um, we did the best we could. Ideally, when you look at it in retrospect, getting children back into classrooms was, is the smartest and the best thing you can do. Baltimore City is facing a devastating reality. Project Baltimore earlier this year reported on 23 schools in Baltimore City that in 2022 had zero students among those tested who scored proficient in math. We can't see if those schools improved until individual school results are released next month. But student performance is a major concern as Superintendent Chaudhary fights for his job. The school board is running out of time to decide if it'll offer Chaudhary a new contract, which would have to be finalized by the end of September. Chaudhary has recently found himself mired in controversy after a Project Baltimore investigation exposed numerous transparency and accountability concerns, which include deleted text messages and a secondary email account he was using to conduct state business, as well as with with Chaudhary's future as superintendent still uncertain Tuesday, the school board president did not offer any updates on when a vote will take place. The board is deliberating. The board has not made a decision. And as soon as we have something definitive to say, we will. There was also one more major development from this week's school board meeting. Project Baltimore was also there to get answers from the state superintendent. For the first time, we were able to ask him about text messages set to auto delete on his state issued cell phone and if that's a violation of state law. We'll show you what he said. We'll also show you who else weighed in on the controversy. That's Wednesday on Fox 45 News at 10.
I'm Chris Pabst. Thanks for watching. Here's another story to watch. Also, if you have a story idea, please send us a message.